Hello, my crafty friends. Well, I've decided to do some marbling with a sheet instead of paper. Just see how it goes. Haven't tried this yet, so I'm going to try it. Um, I just got this sheet at the thrift store. and uh, Well, I didn't just get it today, but that's where I got it from. And it's a craft sheet. <laughs> it's actually a pretty nice sheet. Um, in pretty good shape, but... And it's a queen size sheet, and I got it for two dollars. So, uh, you want a lot of fabric to play with? Look at the sheets. <laughs> uh, I may that might make a good thing to wrap around. Um, wrap around something. Okay, I'm just gonna throw it in. See, there's our our coffee. I'm just gonna tear some stuff and throw it in. Now I did want to make a. Um, a piece that's, I don't know, maybe this wide, um, because I know I can make spines for books and I can, it's a width I can cut down, but it's also, uh, usable. Now I don't want... I don't think I want this in this huge of a piece, so I'm going to um, get it out here. You can't see me do this, but I just stretched it to find out where half is, and um, just cut it in half. <laughs> get. I'm going to get a bunch of the strings off as I go because... That's kind of a mess. Anyway, I'm going to put that one in there. And this one. You could even dye the strings if you want to. and But you'll get plenty more strings off after it's dyed. Okay. And I decided I wanted some that was made like... I don't know, sheets of paper size, maybe. Let's see. Okay. So let's go about right here. Once I get this one torn, I'm going to go ahead and Oh, <laughs> I think I was maybe doing it from the wrong direction. I don't know. Anyway, got a big long piece of that. And I think I'm going to do one more because if we're going to do this, might as well do it enough times to... Oh, looky there. Hmm. How weird is that? <laughs> okay. I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm cutting, ripping it from all different directions, I guess. See, here's the top of the sheet. <laughs> okay. All right. We're just going to do this, those pieces, and this, the rest of the sheet I'm going to put aside because this will be enough for now. I might not even like it. I don't want to waste the whole sheet if I don't like it. That might make a good pocket, so let's just go ahead and put it in there too. Just coffee dyeing this as the basis like I did papers um all right let's get some of these strings off they're fun when you need them but they're just an annoyance when that's not what you're wanting <laughs> okay now then 
I'm going to go through here and just this might make good back book spines too so I'm not doing it a certain length or anything I'm just trying to get it in pieces because I don't even know what I'm going to use all these for yet. So, If I had a certain project in mind um, besides a book spine, which is what I'm wanting to use these for to go over the spine of a book, um, then I might pay attention to where I'm ripping it, you know, and getting a size that um, that's something specific. But this isn't something I'm doing to be specific, so... Now, one thing I'm going to say about these, I don't, um, I washed the sheet first before I did all this. I don't plan to wash it afterwards. So, um, the results, who knows what the results would be if you tried to wash it after you did the, put these dyes on it and stuff. I don't know. Getting it in a bunch of pieces. Okay. You kind of have to move them around because. They're, believe it or not, even when they're submerged, you can have places that don't get um, don't get wet. Now, a sheet that's just been washed, you know, it's any sizing that was on it, you know, in the store or whatever. Of course, this one's been washed who knows how many times since it came from the thrift store. But um, anyway, you're not going to have as big an issue with sizing as you would if it was fresh. And the sizing is one, something that might keep the. Now, if you use fabric softener, that might be something that would keep the dye from soaking in because it puts a film of stuff on everything. I don't use fabric softener, so I don't have to worry about that. But if. And, and there may. You know, the person who had this before me may have used fabric softener, so even the fact that I washed it might not be enough to get all of that off. I might have to deal with that. I don't know. It didn't smell like a lot of things you get. You know when somebody's been using fabric softener on them because they smell really strong, and this one didn't. So, um, as far as I'm concerned, it's a good thing because I don't, I don't care for fabric softener. But um, anyway, that is something to keep in mind. Is that that might that might make a you know, a difference in your the uptake of the coffee or of the ink, either one. Okay. almost there step one it's almost done <laughs>
Now, then, if you did, if you watched where I marbled my papers, then um, you know that getting it wet with the coffee. Um, now, I didn't squeeze out the papers <laughs> because um, they don't soak up stuff quite in the same way that the where did I put my paper towel? Mm. Quite in the same way that the um, fabric does. Okay, so I've got this, and I'm I'm I don't want it in a tight wad like when I squeezed it out. Now you, you can do this in smaller strips. Well, you can do it in big pieces and then strip them down later if you want to make some faux sari silk. Um, so that's something to think about. I thought I had some other strips. Okay, right here. Okay, so here's another one of the strips that I did, and I just, you want it crinkled up so that the dye doesn't, you know, but you don't want it to be, you don't want it to be so tightly wadded that the dye can't move around. So I'm just going to, um, this is my guess, best guess of how to do this, because I haven't done it with fabric before. So you're going to find out whether it works or not. I'm going to show this video whether it works or not, so. So you will know and you don't have to do it yourself. So you want it in a, you know, kind of wadded up, but not, not real tightly. Now I'm unfolding each page, each page, each piece, and then I'm gonna refold it. Um, which means I'm getting some um, and there's plenty of um, stuff on this that you don't have to worry about it getting too dry. Uh, at least not if you live, live maybe in Arizona if you're working outside. But <laughs> <coughs> well, probably even in Texas if you're working outside. But I'm not working outside, so I have the air conditioner going in here. So I'm so I'm just gonna wad all these up. We'll keep getting. And I'm squeezing them out really good because I don't want, I don't want it to just be all coffee. But I do want there to be enough coffee in here that you'll see the the coffee in the, um, you know, in all the folds and everything too, and not just the whatever ink I put in it. And I'm, my thought was to try a bunch of different things and they might end up you know running over or mixing um, and that's I don't think that's a big deal if they do after all this is for junk journals right it's not like I'm making a um, well, even if I was making a quilt, I probably wouldn't care if the colors kind of mixed a little bit. I'm going to have a lot of coffee left. I can dye some more paper, too.
hope it goes quite a ways when you're doing papers or fabric. squeezing and then flattening it out and then crumpling it back up and that may not be as necessary but I really think it'll yield a better result so that's the way I'm gonna do it okay Now I'm going to try to, um, I can spread these out just a little bit because I didn't have, I still had a little space, so that worked out well. So there's my crumpled up papers. I'm going to move the coffee out of the way. Okay. And I'm going to also try something I haven't tried before. I'm going to do this, um, the weathered copper and the copper, because I have these two bottles that are getting close to being empty. And so I'm going to go ahead and do those on some of them. And then I'm going to add these. And these are, I think these are alcohol based. So we'll see how they work. I don't know. And we may mix some of them. And when I'm doing paper, I usually do just a couple of droppers of color on each sheet of paper. So if that translates here, then um, It may be more than we really need. But I am excited to try this on fabric. I've been wanting to try it on fabric ever since it turned out so good on paper, but I just had other things to do. But now it's... Um, going to work into something I'm actually working on, so. Okay, let me find some water here and clean this drop around a little bit. Okay. We're going to move on to the copper. And um, you do want to shake these tattered angels color wash tints that have the metallic in them. You want to shake them up before you get started or you won't get any of the metallic -y. And I think I am going to mix this in with some of these and then I'll do some by themselves. Okay, I'll just do those two to start with. this out again. And then I'm going to, well, I'll do a few, these three before I turn it around. Okay. So I used copper and weathered copper for my two of those. And then I've got these, I don't know, even know how each of these are made. So I've, I've made them various ways. So um, we'll just use them and let me get a, something to put that on. Okay. I'm going to 
to just do a going to do a little bit more because I know this is one of those that's longer. Okay. Now you can, um, now let's do a couple more. Let's do this one. We can clean this out. I don't know if it'll even clean out in just water. Wow. Okay. Definitely takes a while. <laughs> and, um, I've got, let's do the purple one next because that one's kind of a pinky and that one's kind of a turquoise. And um, we've got some of those already, so. I'm just using two, for most of these, I'm just using two droppers full and just hoping for the best. I think I'm going to add a little bit more on that one. I don't even know which one's which now. Some of them are <laughs> so mixed in with each other that... Okay, there's three of those. Like I said, I have no idea whether this will work as well with the alcohol ink as it does with the, I mean, with these ink sprays that are alcohol as it does with the, um, the water-based things, but we won't know unless we try. Oh, I like this color. Sometimes you move them around. Okay. I don't do that all the time because it's really messy. It gets all over your hands, but for that one, I kind of felt like I needed to. Three of those. Okay. And Excuse me, I'm going to turn this around so it'll be a little easier for me to work here. I am going to do um, some of these with this turquoisey color. Because I love that color, so it won't hurt to have a few more. I'm going to go ahead and drip a little bit on this one because I already got some on it, so... 
and I got some of the pink on that so This one right here, I'm just going to leave like that, and I'm going to set these outside. And usually if you set them out in the heat, that will intensify the, um, where as it gets dry, it'll wick up more coffee or more ink or whatever and kind of intensify where some of the colors are. You can already see this purple is breaking. Yay, that's be fun. Okay. And then when they're dry, I'll bring them back in and show them to you. Okay, these are not completely dry, but they are mostly dry. So I decided we would just go ahead and unveil them because I think they've done all of the marbling or whatever that they're going to do. So we're just going to open them up and look at them. One nice thing about doing it on fabric is you don't have to worry about it breaking <laughs> the paper or tearing it when you open it. So um, let me set this over here and we'll just lay them out as we open them. Now, they did leak into each other, so, um, and they're still kind of damp. If I ironed them, they'd probably iron out really well right now, but. Oh, I'm liking these just as much as the papers. I'm so excited. <laughs> oh. So, go find you a sheet. Do some, some fabric ones as well. And the coffee definitely adds a dimension that you wouldn't have if you just got them wet and did it without the coffee. And these are the, I think these are all the alcohol inks. I haven't gotten to the ones yet that are done with the Tattered Angel stuff that I did on the paper, but... not as into that one too it's more spotted but I do like parts of it this is the darker pink This one's one of the long pieces, so we'll just kind of straighten it out here and look at it. And this is where it touched over on the other. Very nice, very nice. And now I'm getting into the ones where I use the Tattered Angel stuff and it's got the sparkles on it. Hannah was very excited when she saw these dry and she was like, you're doing fabric like the papers. And I, I'm just as excited. They're, they're really good. Okay, this is um, just that I thought it might make a good closure for a journal. You know, Oops. that part's really pretty. Okay, let's fold this up real quick. Oh, it's 
didn't have it on the same side. Well, okay. Put it right there. This is the other long one that I uh, intended just to leave to be just coffee, but I think a little stuff leaked in on it. But just coffee's pretty. Yeah, a little bit of that. And a little bit of the pink. But if you just want to use coffee, you could, you would want to add more, you know, maybe soak it longer or not wring it out as much as I did so that you would have more, um, more coffee to soak up to the edge. This one I did with the copper and the green. This one I did with the, some co the copper, but some um, pink got on it. And more pink got on this one. Okay. Well, there they are. Um, I love them. I'm glad I did it. I think it's gonna, they're going to be fun to use. So, um hope that you enjoy this video and it inspires you to go make you some marble fabric now. God bless you. Bye-bye.